Organic produce is very popular among consumers, and so producing organic culinary herbs, fruits, and vegetables in the greenhouse provides a market opportunity for many Florida growers. Before transitioning to organic production in the greenhouse, there are a few important points that I'd like to make today. First, the National Organic Standards has no specific language on greenhouse production. Rather, producers must use the general standards and interpret them as necessary. When you're working with your certifying agent, you will produce a production plan. And in this plan, you will include very specific information concerning both the selection and the sourcing of the inputs you will use. These inputs include media and fertilizer. First, I'd like to show you some different potting media that is used in the greenhouse. This is vermiculite. It is a superheated clay that's expanded. Vermiculite is used in a mix, typically, um, and it functions as both a wetting agent and helps improve aeration in the mix. Perlite has a similar function. It is superheated volcanic rock. Composted pine bark is a readily available material for Florida producers. It comes in a variety of particle sizes and is relatively inexpensive. Growers can make their own mix out of the ingredients shown here, or they can purchase a readily uh, available mix, typically a peat mix that's composed of sphagnum or other peat source, composted pine bark, vermiculite, and or perlite. Germination mixes are similar blended materials, but the particle size is much smaller. This particle size is suitable for germinating small seeds, especially vegetables. Coconut fiber is another option for growers. This fiber must be thoroughly wet before use. Now let's talk about fertilizer. There are a number of different options for organic producers. The first always is to make fertilizer from the resources that you have on farm. One option is to compost animal manures like cow manure or horse manure. Another option is to have worm castings. There are a number of kits available on the internet for you to compost kitchen scraps and other raw materials on farm. This makes a great component for potting mix media. Typically about 20 to 25 percent is added by volume. In addition, there are commercially available blends of macronutrients from a variety of manufacturers. These fertilizer blends come with a guaranteed analysis. They are dehydrated and pelletized components of animal byproducts such as feather meal and bone meal, and they also contain mine nutrients such as potassium. The nitrogen analysis ranges from about 3% to as high as 13%. These materials come in different pellet sizes from large to small, and depending on your production system, you choose a larger or smaller pellet size. The larger pellets will decompose and make the minerals available a little more slowly than the smaller pellets. In addition to the granular formulations, there are also liquid formulations. Typically, these contain seaweed, such as kelp, or fish byproducts, such as fish emulsion. Some products come blended with a guaranteed analysis containing nitrogen, uh, potassium, phosphorus, and sometimes micronutrients. Other companies will sell their fertilizer packaged individually, so ingredients are available separately and you can custom mix your own fertilizer blend. For all of these inputs, it's important to remember that determination of their approval for use is going to be made by your certifying agent. So producers should work carefully with their agent to make sure that those materials can be used in the organic system. One thing producers can look for when shopping for organic inputs or materials is an OMRI label. OMRI stands for Organic Materials Review Institute and they are an independent nonprofit organization that serves the organic community by validating that materials are within the organic law. OMRI labels are voluntary so always discuss your materials with your certifying agent before using them in your system.